second that we're starting a little bit late. We ran over for curriculum, so seven o'clock we're starting. <clears throat> All right, so we have an agenda item from last month that came back to committee from the board meeting. We were asked to revisit the public participation in board meetings policy. There were some concerns about some of the proposals on it. It's coming back to committee. The proposed changes are to remove the items on, on the two where it says the four minutes shall not include any response by a representative of the board to any participant's question. The clock will stop during any responses from a representative of the board that those two sentences will be removed. Everything else will remain the same. There will no longer be the addition of questions will be answered later. There, they will be answered if applicable or if able to at the end of the person who is speaking four minutes of public forum time. Do you have any questions on that? Any committee members? Any oppositions to that? So just <laughs> just to be clear, yeah, we're keeping four minutes. Yeah, the public will still come up. They'll have their four minutes to speak. We ask them to you know ask all of their questions up front, and then. The clock will run as they're if they're done asking their questions, then the board will or administration will respond, but the clock will still be running for their four minutes. The Correct. clock is not going to stop. Correct. If there is time after you answer their questions, are they they're able to respond to what you say? You can't cut them off if they have four minutes. If they still have time remaining, you can't can't say like nope, we might have 20 seconds left, but we're gonna. No, you have to give them their 20 seconds mm -hmm. or whatever time is left. Okay. So that could that could still be the situation we're trying to avoid is the back and forth. So that could still be a factor. I don't think you're ever going to completely eliminate a a full back and forth if that's the case. But what we're trying to do is if a member of the public has questions, to have them ask their questions. First, mm -hmm. and then we take the time to answer them. If we run, if their time is up after those four minutes, then they don't have a chance. They at, at that public forum, they can certainly come up for one of the other ones. Mm -hmm. um, but if there's time left, there's really you can't really do anything. I don't. I don't think. I'm sure you we could, but I don't think it would be appropriate to say you yeah. already asked your questions. Yeah. They already got your answers. Now you need to go sit down. I don't think that's appropriate. You can always just do a reminder. Please ask all your questions first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to make sure everything's yeah. covered and they if they want to take their full four minutes before there's an answer mm -hmm. instead of like little bits and pieces. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I guess my only concern with that um, would be that it might allow some people to ask follow up questions and not others. But hopefully if it's they're asking for agenda items, then they'll have a chance to ask follow up questions in, in the second um, public forum. I think then it's just really that last public forum where anything can be asked where ultimately I guess they can follow up by email or um, you know other methods. But I feel like we want to try to have as much consistency as possible. Um, and you know, certainly I think some answers require more detail than others. So if there's something about an update on Apple Bar, which maybe takes two minutes to give a response to what the update is on you know, the construction there then that person may not have the ability to ask a follow-up question. Whereas if it's someone who asks a simple yes or no question, then they would. I don't know if there's a better way because ultimately we're still giving more than what we're quote, supposed to by you know, New Jersey school boards where they say it's just supposed to be public comments, no response. So I think we're still allowing for something. Um, I don't know if there's a better way. That's just the only potential issue I see with it is that some may not get that chance. I just feel like as long as you're giving the public an opportunity to get a response, then in the name of transparency, then that's what we're doing. When it comes to timing, timing, I mean, I don't want to say we can't really control it. Like you have four minutes. Whatever happens in those four minutes is kind of we're trying to control those four minutes as best as we can without limiting mm -hmm. the public's participation, if that makes sense. So they the public comes up and asks their questions and said it all depends on the type of question and the type of response that you know we can give. And if we can't give a response that night, you know, certainly we also want to make it known, you know, please leave your name and your email address so that we can get you, you know, those responses. Um, we have like a clipboard at the podium that people can just fill out their email address. Mm -hmm. Very good way to speak as well. 
Sometimes we have people sign in okay. every time to speak, so you already have their name. So mm -hmm. if you include the email address, then there would be an easy follow up. Uh, and under age, where it says they could ask their questions ahead of time via email, maybe if we. Oh, we're, we're, so that's that was a proposed oh. change, but when it went to the board, okay, they, it was overall that we would remove that. Oh. Just talking about changing the, um, just removing the stopping the clock okay. piece on number two. Okay. So just for clarification, G and H that came for the first read is going to be removed as well. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So it'll end at F. I have just, mm -hmm. uh, just make, it's a comment, only a comment. Okay. And I, I really hope that our board meeting, that um, no one yells uh, from, from here at a person who's up there because I've experienced that in the past. And I think it's totally inappropriate for anyone who sits on the, on the board mm -hmm. to react to, and, and it's very clear, or, or, or any staff to respond to a, uh, a member of this community in a negative manner. If they can't find a way to respond, we get back to Mars. It's, we just can't allow that to happen. It's such a terrible reflection on us as a group, mm -hmm. that I, I hope we never see anything of that sort of happen again. And I think we have to make sure the message gets out clear. Well, I think we started off on the right foot. We adopted those additional two code of ethics guidelines. They're recommended, and we, as a board, voted to, yes, we're going to incorporate this as part of our uh, standard or our rules of how we want to appear to the public. Right. So I think that was a good step in the right direction. It seemed like everyone was on board with that as well. I think it's a great, great move. Absolutely. So are we then okay with moving this for first read? Or do you? Okay. Mm -hmm. So it'll go back for, for, it's been for first read, but then it came back for, to committee for revision. So I believe it was again for another first read. Oh, okay. I thought since we had the majority and we could still revise it after the first read and it would be the oh, second. I'm sure. But it's past first read. But we can ask Mr. Gagliardi. Yeah, okay. Um, All right, so it'll be on the agenda. Okay. The next item I wanted to update was our board committee's policy because we changed some of the names. I will see what I did with it. Um, if not, I'll just click on it right here. Right here. Okay, so where it says standing committees. So it says the standing committees include personnel negotiations. So that one would be just personnel. Um, amended to say personnel. Policy is going to remain the same. Curriculum, co-curricular, athletics, another slash, and then pupil personnel services. Maybe we can abbreviate it like CCAP or something like that, mm -hmm. just for yeah. the purposes <laughs> on the website. Because you know sometimes when we it's just very... call it curriculum. Or like last time we were just calling it curriculum. Mm -hmm. I was calling curriculum people personnel. Mm -hmm. I feel like the co-curricular athletics pieces gets lost. Is left. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. uh, finance remains the same. Buildings and grounds, transportations, and security. Yep. All right. So instead of BGT, now we're BGTS. Mm -hmm. uh, LACE, right? So yep. we have to change that to legislative action, community engagement. Mm -hmm. And we're removing communications. Yes. Okay. And then we're adding the citizens advisory committee to this document, yep. even though it's a, it has its own policy. Okay. And I believe nothing else on this has to change. Anything else remains the same. So if the committee's okay with those changes, we can move it on to the agenda for first read. Yeah. My only thought, and we don't have to do this, it's really just semantics, but for legislative action, making legislative advocacy, I just I feel like advocacy is like we're standing up for for the district. Um, and still lace, so yes, still lace. <laughs> we can still use the uh, acronym. But I've seen that when I was looking at the committees from other districts that they have this advocacy. And I know Mr. Meralda has on the um, advocacy website, um, so I felt like it might be appropriate to change that since we're making changes anyway. Okay. What does the committee think about that? That's fine. Instead of legislative action, legislative advocacy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll put that on my notes too. All right. Let's 
All right, conflict of boardings. Ms. Ramner, you asked me to bring this onto the agenda because you wanted to, we thought it would be a good idea to discuss the order of the agenda. Mm -hmm. So when we had started discussing the, um, the public forum policy, um, I started taking a look at the policies that sort of affect that. And this is one of them it's because it sort of lists what um, we're doing. Um, I think that one thing that I found interesting is that we're not required for that uh, first public forum to be agenda item only. Um, I sort of like the idea knowing that we didn't want to uh, look into remote participation because there's a lot that could go into mm -hmm. security and all of that. Yeah. This might allow some of those people who want to speak the opportunity to do so earlier in the day that maybe, you know, don't feel comfortable driving late at night or have young families or anything like that. At the same time, like this is a business meeting, just like get, throw out both sides about it. Um, so ultimately we're supposed to take care of the, the business of the board and then, you know, have the um, public forum as well. But I did want to um, present that option um, about trying to see if there's a way for a public forum to be earlier to allow for people to um, participate if it's possible. Does anyone know the history as to why it was changed to agenda items only? So I don't have that history, no. I don't, I think it's- But it said it was revised in 2023. I think that was- um, And then 2019. Added, right. The 2023 revision was not that it was already like that uh, because I do remember seeing prior to that um, that it was mentioned that the first public forum does not have to be agenda items. So I know it's been there since at least 2020. Mm -hmm. It's possible that that was a change in 2019. I, I don't know for sure. Yeah, I don't know when it was changed historically. I just know that it wasn't the last one because I would hear that. So what you're asking or what we're discussing is should we combine public forum one and two? And then keep the so there would be two public forums instead of three. Mm -hmm. Or I think there would just be I think there would still or, be three. You just don't have to specify agenda items only. Is that what we're? I mean, I don't. I think either way is fine. I I'm not sure if we need a closed session items only public forum. I mean, we almost never use it. But well, that's only if we go into another into a closed session. Mm -hmm. Um, because ultimately we have the closed session now at the beginning, um, which if someone's going to speak on closed session items, we'll have already had the discussion. So I don't know if that's worth keeping at the bottom since most of the time we're doing most of it at the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, How many um, public forums do you have in June's we have the first one that's public agenda, uh, agenda items only, mm -hmm. and then the later one is open okay. public comment. Could you speak a little bit? Oh, more? yeah. Please. Our first one is the same. It's the agenda items only, and then later on, there's public comment that's open to other topics. So right. you do have agenda it's, items only. Yeah, and we don't. I don't think we have a closed session comment. Um, you don't unless, have a third one. You have two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Unless we do, and just have never needed to use it when I've been there. All right. So. It sounds like we're consistent, at least with mm -hmm. Jamesburg, except for the last one, which we haven't really had to use. At least right. since I've been on the board, I don't recall ever having a third public forum, but it's mm -hmm. good to have it, I think, there in case there is something mm -hmm. and the public does want to speak on it. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so just as far as keeping the first one as agenda items only, you know, I feel like I, I know what Ms. Ratner and I have talked about this. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> And I understand wanting to allow the public to come up and you know express their comments earlier than sometimes that it's been allowed based on you know the timing of our meeting. Um, but it is a business meeting, so there is business of the board that does need to be conducted. And so the purpose of having the agenda items only first after the committee reports is to talk about anything that might be coming up for a vote because we go to vote right after that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. So you told me basically so I can understand this. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because being so new to me. Mm -hmm. um, so in essence, what you're, what you're suggesting is 
rather than uh, allow three cards for people to come up to the mic, you just really want to go twice. Is that is basically that? Well, I think I, I, I think the discussion was going around getting rid of the the phrase agenda items only. Okay. Um. But it seems like we want to keep it just to put it out to, there, or, you know, streamline the meeting to keep the meeting streamlined because. It could then delay the business of the board if it's not streamlined to just agenda items only. Right. And I did look up South Brunswick just because, you know, we look towards them often since they're so close and they don't have it specific to agenda items. Um, they um, just have public comments, then board committee reports, action item, public comments, board comments, adjournment. Um, Obviously, theirs hasn't been revised since 2008 either, so well, cool. you know, <laughs> that's a very really large difference. difference. Um, I just I wanted to pull it up to see what else is out there. Um, so, I mean, ultimately, I, I think the way we have it is fine. I just know when we had spoken about the challenges of having remote participation, it was the idea, is there any way to, uh, to make it easier? But I also mm -hmm. think if we have our citizens advisory committee now, and we have more opportunities for people to ask questions, then hopefully we won't need to have this as an option. Um, so I'm not sure what you're suggesting. We were just having a discussion to see if we wanted to change that first public forum to include all comments rather than leaving no, it as no, agenda no, items, comments, rather, rather than just no. agenda items only. And it Specific. seems okay. like the committee feels Overall, that we keep it as is. Of course, what well, happens if the when you come up to other aspects of it, then they don't have a chance to go up there. I mean, I'm just looking at the negative and positive, but I, I tend to go more with <laughs> uh, let them just go up the one time and be done with it. To be to be first, you know, it seems to be. You mean one public forum? I don't know. I don't know what. What do you see? How do you think we need both? Yeah, I guess have two. Yeah, have to. yeah. Mm -hmm. but I think my feeling is to keep agenda items only as the first public forum, and then you know public comment for the, At the end. second. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. So then this does not need to come to the board. Right. But we're keeping it as is. Okay. Right. And then is this over at seven thirty. Seven thirty. Seven thirty. Okay. Seven. All right. Sorry. All right, so we were, uh, Dr. Chamley's not here, so we would like for her to be part of this discussion because briefly outside of um, during the week in the transition period, we were discussing the possibility of allowing remote uh, staff to work from home. Like, um, if they're on a leave of absence, possibly working from home. I put the policy up that we currently have in place that has anything to do with remote instruction. And it was all related to the state of emergency closure during COVID-19. It's still here in case there's ever another state of emergency where hopefully that never happens again, because <laughs> that was not a good time for a lot of people. So we are just opening that up here, putting it on the agenda. We're going to table it and discuss it further when Dr. Chanley is back from her leave. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Cool. Is that okay with the committee? Yeah. Okay. But as it stands right now, our policy is only related to if there's a declared state of emergency. That we would have virtual options. I oh go ahead. I was just gonna say, are you looking just at like teachers instructing students or like an office staff who might be out and doing work at home or and is that divided up differently? Yes, we're, we're just opening up the conversation, so I'm not sure where it's <laughs> going to head, but that's a good question to save for next month mm -hmm. because it be logistically complicated. Like if we want to have equity for everyone, you know, we have to consider that teachers, you know, how does that look for mm -hmm. them to be able to work remotely? How does it look for a principal to work remotely? How does it look for who else? Like a supervisor or director? So, you know, we want to be equitable across the board. I also feel like there are some positions where we really can't work from home. Mm -hmm. I think, like you had mentioned, equity yeah. is important. Um, I know that there is, maybe I'll put this on specifically to look at tomorrow in um, place. Um, there's a bill that's pending at the state. I that's as of last month, it might have had movement since then, 
to allow local districts to determine if they need to go remotely. Like, actually, I know, I think it was last year, my mom who teaches in Elizabeth, her school had had to go remote because their school mm -hmm. building had flooded. Um, but I think it was technically still during the state of emergency. So they were able to do that. And then um, that was lifted. So they weren't any longer. But um, I think if that's something that passes, then, you know, there's more of a potential chance of this happening. But I do think it's important that we look across the board because it shouldn't be just for, you know, t teacher, just for uh, you know, yeah. And also, like, some districts are doing snow days virtual. So that's another <laughs> yeah, discussion. So but I have seen that in New York public schools do it a lot. They have transportation issues mm -hmm. when there's snow. So operating the district into an individual building, currently, uh, county superintendent approval is needed to, you know, if we had a water main break in front of a school, right, and we had to shut down a school. Um, that happened in East Brunswick yep. recently, very recently. And, and in Old Bridge, I think, mm -hmm. last year as well. So mm -hmm. um, communication with the county superintendent, and I would imagine in most cases, it's permission given, um, but any uh, pivot to remote instruction right now is run through uh, the county superintendents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the snow day thing was a brief discussion for a, there at one point, and then I feel like it kind of, yeah. Snow days are side. fun. We don't want to get no. <laughs> but also staying late in the summer. Well, that is not where I work. They don't build in snow days, so they just add them on to the end. <laughs> so I like that we build them in. Yeah, yeah. yes. Yeah. Built around Memorial Day. There was one year when we had like four days built in. We had a whole week off for Memorial. And that was that yeah, was that great. Was um, not this year. <laughs> yeah. Dr. Lehman, do you know when um, teachers and staff were no longer able to utilize COVID days in the district? By any chance? Define COVID days. So if a teacher had COVID, mm -hmm. um, I know that there are certain districts that even this year, if the teacher had COVID, they were given use of sick, uh, COVID days um, instead of utilizing sick days. So we, we utilized sick days only. So it was district by district to determine whether COVID days would be separate than what the standard allotment for mm -hmm. their sick time was. Um, and it was part of the whole process for several years, talking about, you know, your member early in the days, there was a mandatory requirement mm -hmm. to stay out for certain periods of time and how that played into teachers using sick time and then them having to stay home, any staff member staying home with a sick child who was mandatorily, uh, you know, held out from their school, their homeschool or whatever. But and we did not determine, you know, and I don't know that there are actually many districts that added in a negotiated, it would have been a negotiation to give teachers additional sick time specific to mm -hmm. COVID. Um, ours was all embedded in our uh, existing sick time. Okay. And in the allotments and vacation time for appropriate staff members that get vacation allotted to them in the year. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then I almost forgot, we were gonna review having a board protocol document to hand out to all our board members. I gave everyone a copy. Um, did you wanna read this out? Yeah, it's okay. Can we talk about it? Sure. So we just, I know we had, we, the three of us, received an email um, with a list of protocols that had previously been in place. And so we thought it would be something that would be good to bring first here and then to give to the entire board. Um, so everybody's on the same page and familiar with protocols going forward because there are some, some things that are tied to policy um, and we just kind of want to make sure that everybody is on the same page. So Right, because when I came on the board, there wasn't a document per se and that email that was sent out was a year and a half after mm -hmm. I was on the board. So I think this would be helpful for our new board members just so that everyone has something they can refer to if they're not sure what our protocols are. I mean, that'd be great if you could maybe provide some insight to if there's anything that you see that might be different or the same, um, you know, from the Jamesburg board. Um, I mean, we're not trying to like be outrageous. We're just trying to find like what's fair and what's consistent. reasonable. <laughs> be right. consistent. Yeah, I think consistency is important. Um, I will have to look at some of my papers. And see <laughs> yeah. um, I feel like this all makes sense. I yeah. don't think anything stands out as like unusual, but I don't remember. No, that's <laughs> totally, totally fine. That's why I'm glad you have the document. <laughs> um, I know, did it, any did anybody have a chance to review it or were there any questions or things that you wanted to open for discussion? Yeah, this, this makes me, well, whatever. 
Um, <laughs> number three. <laughs> Make you confused or? Yeah, number three. Number three. Okay. Okay. The superintendent yes. is a contact for the board because mm -hmm. I, I, I read this, I looked at it a number of times, mm -hmm. and I just wasn't sure of the meaning of it. Okay. Uh, I just want to get it clarified for me. The superintendent is a contact for the board. Board members should not be contacting employees directly. Well, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Some people don't okay. know that. that, that yeah. Yeah, from the no start. Yeah. But then it says this also includes the business administrator and the assistant superintendent. Are we saying that the board administrator and the assistant superintendent should not be contacting employees? Directly. No, no, no. We're saying I, I know no, we're saying members. board members shouldn't be contacting. I know you're saying that, but this I'm I'm reading two meanings into this. Okay. That's that's mm -hmm. that's the problem. Uh at least from, from my perspective. I don't know what you guys read into it, but I, I think we need to make it that's a little mm -hmm. bit clearer. Okay. okay. So you're you're reading it as that they can't contact us. Yeah, well that's that, that's what I'm reading into. I'm reading that and I'm also reading uh, the other part, but it's not, it's not really clear. Mm -hmm. I think it needs to be cleaned up just a little bit. That's I mean, what if we just write, instead of include the business administrator, assistant superintendent, you could just do not contacting right. any other employees. Or just take out the board members should not, uh, just take out the social includes the business administrator and assistant superintendent. Take out the second, yeah, take out the second, the second bolded sentence. Mm -hmm. Take out that sentence. But we, we should so. still leave board members should not be contacting employees directly because mm -hmm. sometimes there's a gap between when you get sworn in and you take that first governance training. Mm -hmm. And sometimes board members don't know that they can't just email a principal directly well, and that could get them in trouble. Well, this one knows. <laughs> <laughs> That's not my job. So, so I think <laughs> that needs to stay so that that's clear <laughs> until you do your governance from training if you've never been oh, on the board before. Absolutely, I, should, yes, right. I, should be, I totally agree I, with you. But we can. I'm, I'm comfortable with removing the second yeah. second item. I did also want to just check about because the business administrator is the board secretary. They, I think it's important. And then I also was looking at number one to sort of possibly like all emails from board members, can we just say should have a copy to the board president instead of just like taking out to the superintendent so it's all emails. Yeah. Um, because then that sort of covers Everything. that you'll be aware of what is happening. Um, just because mm -hmm. like I feel like there might yeah. be certain times where like I, I registered for governance mm -hmm. three, right? Which ultimately I have no problem like saying, hey, I'm going to mm -hmm. contact Ms. Allen. But at the same time, I think there are certain things, especially being board secretary, that it might be appropriate to contact directly, depending on the school boards. And I want, I want to just for because the public is hearing this discussion. It's not because you know I don't trust the board. Right. Um, it's just for to be able to keep a pulse on you know what's happening. Like, what are your questions? You know, what do you feel like needs to be brought up for discussion? Um, it's just so I can be kept in the loop. It's not because I don't trust anybody and I don't want them to be able to access, right. you know, and anybody. This has been put in, like, as, for as long as I've been on the board, this has been the unwritten protocol. Mm -hmm. So it's not like it's new. It's, it's just, it's just now, now that it will be there. there. Right. Um, and then that way, like, if someone asks a question, then if another board member has that same question and they ask you, you'll have that answer. Um, actually, so when Mr. Zeichner brought up that, you know, we shouldn't be contacting anyone directly, it made me realize if we want to put in here about, um, because we do have a number of board members who are parents, mm -hmm. that if they contact, if they either volunteer in the school or they have children in the school, that that is an exception. However, they must make it clear that they are speaking as a parent and not as a board member, just because that was something else that like, it's sort of unwritten. And like, every time I send an email for one of my kids, I write parent of, but, and you yeah. use your personal email. I'm just saying, I think if the, if the communication is coming through to your personal email, then it, it's your there as a parent. I mean, if you if you want to make the general statement, like I am here as a parent, not as a board member, then, you know, certainly by all means. But if the, you know, communication is coming from your personal email or to your personal email, then it would just assume the role of the parent. Mm -hmm. And also, I believe when we went to our board orientation, that was said. During that meeting, I'm not sure if you guys have you have they have the board orientation coming next up. week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I know that was just said at the meeting about that. Okay. All right. Just for the only other one was the um, social media using the disclaimer. Do we want to 
throw something there. Um, and provide the. But are we? But are we also then infringing on anybody's yeah. First Amendment rights? Like, if anybody wants to post on social media, I mean, we're like we're adults here, right? I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to have to like. I don't want it to look like I'm trying to like babysit. So if you want to put a so post out on social media, that's certainly your prerogative to post on social media. Um, I mean, I can put the disclaimer, like I, we can put it on here. Like if you would like to use the disclaimer when you're posting on social media, here it is so that anybody have, can have it, you know, in front of them. But I mean, it's not. Well, I kind of disagree because I think this is just for the board. Yeah, I don't. Our board emails and how we interact yeah. with each other. Not like I don't want to. Mm -hmm bring social media into this. Yeah. That's my feeling. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's in the training also that the governance one training that mm -hmm. we, it gets reiterated. Right. But like you very many said, there's that period where they don't necessarily have that. Like I had looked, I mean, granted it's from Virginia, but I had brought up this norms and protocols from mm -hmm. another district where it just says the chair, you know, in this case, president will speak as the official voice of the board. A single board member will not represent the board without consent of the board board members making personal statements in any format, including speeches, articles, social media posts, et cetera, should clearly state that these are statements are their opinion and not mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the position of the board. Um, just because this is like, if this is like board email protocol only, then I would totally agree. It would not be, it would not be appropriate here. But if it's like board member protocol, then I feel like- But I'm also not gonna that. tell somebody to use the disclaimer or not. Does that make sense? Like if you're posting on social media, you're doing so at your own risk. So you're doing that if you're speaking on your own, you're gonna use the disclaimer if you want to. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to, that's also your choice. And that's the risk that you take if the public, you know, feels like you're speaking as a board member and speaking out of line. Right. Well, this certainly added to your list of things to discuss the orientation. Yes. In the simple. Yeah. You know, it's simple. It doesn't, you don't make it. But I do feel like it's a little more bit over. It has to be. Yeah. <laughs> Keep it simple. Yeah. All right. So I'll make those amendments and then we could maybe email the final version to the board. I can include it in my confidential. Okay. Do so you want to keep this with the yeah. chefs? Sure. Is this something that we'll be approving at? No, we don't have to do it right now. We can use protocols for us. All right, so if there's nothing else, any other items or questions, and I can adjourn the meeting at 7.32, so we should be back <laughs> on schedule <laughs> for our last meeting. Thank you.